the first thought that enter your mind is the thought that society teach you to think, but the second thought that comes into your mind is actually define who you are. It's just a cultural stereotype. I mean, the problem is in our minds. Basically, the, the situation of gender like gets better. That uh, both sexes can be whoever they want. I believe that uh, gender equality is not the simple form of the word equality itself. The way I understand it is how this concept of masculinity could be uh, toxic for men. So, for example, it would be that um, a male couldn't show. Um, his weakness or shouldn't be um, affected by things or should be strong and sometimes if he doesn't fit that uh, definition given by society it can be toxic for him for example he if he shows uh, his weakness people are going to judge and at some point he cannot be himself but he needs to be what society wants him to to be and so toxicity is that negative effect on him so I, need, yeah. I understand it. Also, like, for, for myself, I think I'm from a society where the concept of masculinity is promoted by the, like, even the government and, like, what you are teach in, when you are, what you are taught in school that you need to be strong as a guy. And then I found that quite uncomfortable because sometimes I want, sometimes I'm, why I'm a quite emotional person and I can't really show that in front of other people, otherwise people will judge me. So I think this phenomenon in the society should be changed and we shouldn't, you know, have that many stereotypes mm -hmm. of like each gender. We should be, we're all human beings. I think I mean toxic masculinity, so I think it's the sort of like um, strong male stereotype. Mm -hmm. But not just the stereotype itself, but sort of like when it forces itself on on others, I think. Mm. As a man, I think you're more like subjected to it indirectly. Mm. Because sometimes it's like, it's through society, it's like some practices and things are like ingrained mm. so deeply inside of you that you have to like very actively again work against it. Be like, shit, like don't do these things don't say these things, um, mm. even if it's not what you mean, even if it's not even what your inner self thinks. Mm. Like sometimes you would just like say something and the next moment you realize, fuck, yeah. <laughs> that's not this like, it doesn't, ref it doesn't, that doesn't reflect you, you know? Mm. So I think like it's, yeah. yeah. Even like, even um, I think, um, I, I share the same idea, like yeah. toxic masculinity is basically something, um, an opinion or like, more like a norm of saying what men should be, yeah. which means that men has to be men have to be perfect or be like strong or have um, certain types of body etc. And something it pressures people. But personally, I don't think it affects me that much. Uh, I'm not even sure why. But like I think, for example, I I'm, I'm not ashamed of telling people that um, sometimes my emotions disturb me sometimes. Uh, I'm not ashamed of saying that I cry sometimes. I need yeah. to cry yeah. sometimes. Um, and I think um, this idea of um, strength shouldn't be associated to men because there's like variety of variety of types of men, which mm. means that um, some men might be strong, some men um, might be like easily emotionally uh, being disturbed by something. Uh, so, yeah. I wasn't really familiar with the term, and I, I'm still not really familiar with toxic masculinity. And, and because I don't, I don't really know what toxic masculinity is, I don't think it affects me. Um, but I think I would assume it's kind of like, you know, macho, um, like macho culture in, like, in, in Latin America, where like the boys always have to be authoritative, you know, big six-pack, mustache sort of thing. I think it's the oversimplification of... Uh place of uh, people in society and role that should be assigned. Um, I think toxic masculinity do not affect me. I, as you say, I don't have a six pack, big mustache. Um, 
I think I express my masculinity without being toxic. I think here toxic implied that you're uh, attacking or degrading, I would say, uh, femininity or uh, the place of women. And now I think about it, I, I think it also has to do with something, some like um, social expectations that, that guys have, like, you know, how guys are not supposed to cry, you know, they're always supposed to be strong, if they get hurt, they just wipe it away, you know, they, they don't show, like, what they're feeling. Um, and yeah, I, I definitely think that this ties into what toxic masculinity is. I think of toxic masculinity as, yeah, kind of like this very stereotypical guy who's playing sports, who dresses, dresses in a particular way, has bad personal hygiene, goes to the gym, is a gym bro. But I also think that, uh, um, and it did, yeah, it did affect me a lot up until like a couple of years ago, but now I just, I love like laughing at it. I, I love like going, like contradicting it so much and having like a feminine masculinity instead. I found that way more. And another thing that I find really like interesting is that I think if you, if you feel the need to show your masculinity through the way you dress or through the way you act, then you have a very weak masculinity or a very, yeah. I mean, for me, I personally hate toxic masculinity because like, I'm so sorry, but like, uh, whenever I see someone just try to be, not try, uh, they may be are like themselves, but like, if they are like, it's just my, my preference, like to, cannot like, you know, like relate to them, like that kind of toxic masculinity. But like, at the same time, I do think that they have the right to do whatever we, they want as, as much as we do. So like, if they choose to become like, to act in the toxic masculinity way I just okay fine but for, for me I just don't like it okay yeah no I of course like you should respect everyone uh, but I also think that I know it's very I think it's a social or it's something society has built up it's a social contract uh, construct of masculinity of being like one specific specific person and I do think that I know this might be a bit controversial. I do think that it's limiting a lot of people in the way they, in what they, their actions, how they, what they do, what they think, and uh, yeah, I do think that if toxic masculinity would have been lowered or suppressed a bit, I do think that a lot of people would have felt a lot more freer, even like subconsciously or subconsciously. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I also do think that people, even though they're not necessarily affected by it. I do think that they embody a lot of it, even if they don't notice it themselves. Okay. Yeah. In the world I came from, yeah. I come from, um, usually the idea is that if you go out for first date, yeah. um, you need to pay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also like men should ask the women out yeah. instead of the other way around. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like, moral responsibility that men should have yeah. but I think it's a, I think it's a bad norm in a way yeah, that it shows true. that men should be in control of himself and the relationship um, but at the end like in reality I think it depends on the couple itself if um, if the first date the man wants to pay it's fine if the woman wants to pay uh, it's fine or they can just like split it or whatever so I don't think there should be any um, dominant narrative of what men should do and um, women should accept. Um, for me, in a word, for, like, family members in a word is trying to erase the historical disadvantage from female and trying to uplift their social status and uh, try to uh, erase all the stereotype about of female. I wouldn't identify myself as feminist because I I think like the word I like better is like gender equality activist or whatever. So I just think definitely there's something should be promoted as a female, but for male there's something should be worked on as well. Because I think that's mutual, you know. Uh, also, the society has a lot of pressure on men as well, and. But because 
suppose we are on the superior level, so nobody tried to think about it and nobody tried to like reflect about it. But I think there were a lot of the concern. Because as of now, I completely support feminism because it is still a long way to yeah, go. There yeah, is still yeah. a long way to go. But I think once we get close to that, then maybe we could try revising yeah, yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, that's my point. But I think to answer the, the, the last question really quickly, would I identify as a femi feminist? Yes, I would. In its pure sense, yes. For me, I would say feminism is a narrow idea for me. I would expect it to be like broader, also containing like male as well. When we when they're promoting feminism. Yeah. I think it's normal. Guys do it, why girls shouldn't do it. I think it's also a way for the girls to take control of their body, discover it in a way. I think like a lot of um, boys like think it's kind of weird and definitely when I when I first heard that like uh, of like girls masturbating watching porn I was a little bit surprised but I think um, as you said like if guys do it why can't girls do it and just like you know guys do it to you know discover body you know what what pleases them and stuff um, I think you know it's only fair that that girls get the same treatment and we shouldn't look at them negatively because of that in many countries such as I think France or the US the West world in general the the porn itself is much more centered for the guys yeah. and that's why a lot of people in the society would judge girls watching that because I would not say that in majority of those porn movies uh, women are, you know, uh, you could say, respected or produce, uh, represent fairly uh, sexuality uh, between a guy and a girl. I think what the question is implying that is it the guy that have to make uh, the decision? I don't think so. I think it's um, it should be equally big decision is to be made uh, together. But after in relationship, I think it's based more on uh, personality. Some guys, some girls, sometimes are. Uh, have difficulty to make choice, and I don't think it's at all related to uh, gender. I think just personality. I'm more a guy that makes decision. I think is um, my own personality. I think catcalling is one of the most disgusting things that you find in the most in every society. And I was very surprised coming to France, which is considered as one of the most developed countries in the world. And catcalling is a daily routine for a lot of girls. I, I understand. Like, maybe like men, they think that it's just a catcalling, just a sign of flirting or something. Like what goes through someone's head when they're just walking down the street, minding their own business, and then they see someone that they think is nice, and then they decide mm. to scream at them. I don't really don't understand yeah. the logic behind it. It's really yeah. strange. Yeah, I think they should like behave more nicely. The weird thing here is that for girls, it seems harder for them to express this kind of desire publicly, and especially it's not a proper desire to say. And I think maybe the society gives, seemingly gives men more authority to expi like express them themselves in this way. Society has more pressure than gir uh, on girls in terms of expressing mm -hmm. themselves yeah. on, this, on the, how to say, sex desire or whatever. Yes, I have. Um, I think um, coming from a guy, you know, we don't really know what goes on in the female's body. And I think that, um, I'm not sure with like your education system, but um, like when I did sex ed at school, we really only talked about like, um, like the male puberty and stuff like that. So I, I really think that um, uh, it, it's really important that, you know, guys know exactly what's going on with the, the girl's body and, um, um, and, of course, the other way around, too. And then I think is one thing to know what is happening and it's another to uh, not be, not shy, but do not make it a, a taboo. And that, I think, for myself, went through my... Uh, family education. Uh, my mother, I have a sister that is a year and a half younger than me and we have a relationship that is 
closer to uh, twins than to yeah. um, brother and sister. So we're really open about it, and uh, it's something that I've never have a taboo to talk about it. Mm. Regarding uh, with uh, friend or girlfriend I have or family, it happened more than once that I uh, I needed to help uh, my sister, my mother, mm-hmm. and I needed to go buy uh, some tampons uh, mm-hmm. for for a thing. I think it's one thing to learn; it's another to kind of practice and not mm-hmm. make it a taboo. It's definitely also part of like uh, it ties a lot with culture. Like if that if like your family is open towards talking about it, if society is open towards talking about it, of course you would naturally have more exposure to what goes on? Well, I never really talk to girl about period, but like we don't avoid that either. Or like if I'm with multiple people and they start talking about the periods, it's like, I don't get awkward, but it's like nothing I can contribute really in that conversation because I haven't, I don't know what, what I, I, I don't know what they're going through and I haven't experienced it myself, obviously. I think um, gender, I would say gender parity is basically equivalent to gender uh, equality. Um, so obviously I believe um, gender equality must be achieved in mm-hmm. a way. Um, it, um, like more, for example, in the past, um, women um, couldn't vote. Uh, and then there's suffragette movement that tried to fight for women's right to vote, right to vote education, right to work. And now we have... Um, a movement trying to fight for um, women be equally paid for specific type of jobs and uh, on average they have um, like um, I think uh, in a way that it is unfair for women who work as hard as men probably mm. even harder um, to gain less than we, um, men um, for the same type of job um, um, yeah what about you? Yeah, no, I agree. I think I think the difference you could make is sort of like gender equality is sort of like equality in understanding. Mm. So, and gender parity is like literally being more like, okay, everything, everyone and everything should be equal. Mm. But I think it's not, I think what is important is that there's sort of like an, an actually equal understanding of each other. Mm. So, of course, like if a woman has her period, this might actually biologically affect her. Mm. And, um, and that's fine, you know. It's not about being like, oh, you have to um, be as p- do the same performance as a man during your period because, well, if a man had these mm. issues, you know, it will also affect him, you know. Mm. So I think equality is a lot about in un- understanding each other and understanding yeah. understanding the differences which sort of exist, mm. but having like an equal mindset to it. Mm. As, yeah, I like the idea that uh, you talk about understanding because sometimes. There's um, between men and women. Sometimes we have we have to agree that there's uh, biological differences yeah. between us, and the only way to reconcile, like to find a middle ground between men and women, is the understanding yeah. um, between each other. Like, what's the point of gender existing in society? For me, it's not only about. It's for me. It's more about giving specific patterns for people to behave. You know, like the reason why we have gender despite sex, it's because we expect some kinds of people to behave in a specific way. And it's easier for, the, for us to distinguish because we don't have to like discuss case by case and they should be behaving that way, they should be behaving this way. So I think there was also a societal reason for, for it to be existed. That's why it, like, it lasted so long. And I think it's hard for it to be erased. So I don't know, from like a sociological level, I think it makes society more stabilized if we have this gender parity. But that's why we need the revolution, so, yeah. No, but I think we sh- I mean, I, 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 if I got what you were saying, right, I think I'd like to disagree on the um, why gender exists as well, because, I, I mean, at least theoretically, I think it should still continue to exist, because, uh, you know, there are certain physical differences at the very least. So I think those should, I mean, yeah, we, we can't disca- discount them as you know non-existent i think that's what i think i think it should be achieved because people are born equal so um the disparity we see now is it's a result of the history and we can't say if it's right or wrong but i think it will be better if we achieve gender parity 
so that everyone feel equal in the society and everyone experience the same situation as uh, the, the opposition. <laughs>